Excellent. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started, and let's talk about uh, inflation. The inf- uh, the uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index, came out uh, uh, yesterday, and uh, it was as you can kind of see here. Hopefully, you can see my screen. Uh, this is a website. It's called U.S. Inflation Calculator. Dot com, uh, just kind of a good, uh, fun website to give you an overview of inflation, concerns about inflation. Uh, but we can see here that the inflation rate as of yesterday was 5%. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that, that prices from last year at this time have increased 5% on the uh, everyday stuff that uh, that uh, we all buy. So what types of everyday stuff? They call it a basket of goods, but this is uh, the uh, fuel prices for gas we put in our cars, uh, housing prices, whether it's mortgages or rents, uh, food prices, uh, clothing prices, uh, entertainment prices. Uh, we've all seen, uh, we've seen that go up by 5% compared to last year or last May. This is the May number. We uh, uh, don't have the June number yet. We'll get that uh, next month. Uh, But we've had a rate increase of 5%. Now that's a pretty big increase and causes concern that prices are moving up too quickly. Uh, uh, High inflation is very dangerous for an economy because as prices go higher, uh, you and I can buy less stuff and uh, therefore the economy tends to slow down. So this will usually have a negative effect on stocks, particularly uh, growth stocks. Uh, But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, Uh, but let's just uh, 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 play with the uh, inflation calculator just to see kind of the effects of prices going higher. Uh, So I looked up, uh, if we go back to 50 years to 1971, I know a long time, uh, and I looked up the price of a new car, uh, the average price of a new car in 1971. Are you ready? $3,000. Considering what the car, probably a new car might be, I'd say on average, probably over 30,000 right now for the average car. Uh, now, if we, uh, if we inflation adjust that, how much would that be uh, in today's dollars? A $3,000 car adjusted for inflation since 1971 to 2020. So we got 50 years and we go ahead and calculate it. And so a $3,000 car should be 19,900 or about 20,000 uh, today. Uh, and I would say that the cars have gone up faster than inflation because I'd say your average car is, I don't know, I'd probably say around 30,000. Uh, I think the uh, the number, uh, the mean number is about 40, uh, 40, 40, 40 45,000 for a new car, but that takes into account some very expensive cars and also well, there's not that many very cheap cars anymore. But just to kind of give you an idea of prices and how they affect you and I, things going higher. Uh, But let's take a look at this. uh, The first part of the call, I wanted to kind of uh, uh, dissect inflation and say, is this going to be a continuing problem? Some people are saying, yes, it uh, it is going to continue. Prices are going to continue to go higher. And this is going to be bad for investments going forward, particularly growth stock investments. Uh, Some people are saying, such as Janet Yellen, uh, our uh, Treasury Secretary is saying that, nope, this is a a short-term issue. It's gonna be a flash in the pan and prices are gonna go back to normal. What's normal for prices? Uh, We would like to see some growth in prices, but not a lot. So the target is 2% that the Fed always talks about because we do want a little bit of growth because that helps the economy grow and also helps wages go up. Uh, But we don't want a lot of growth. Uh, We've had periods, for example, in the mid 70s and early 80s, we had inflation rates of 15%. Uh, So hyperinflation, very dangerous for an economy, uh, very hard to get under control. Uh, and it uh, definitely negatively affects stocks uh, because usually if we have rampant prices going up, it causes the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. If they raise interest rates, it makes things even more expensive for us to buy because we, all, we are a borrow and spend economy. So we, we borrow uh, money to buy things. And if it's more expensive to borrow money, we're going to borrow less or buy less. Uh, 
uh, so that uh, uh, the economy will suffer. But let's dissect this number a little bit and take a look at it. If we go down here, uh, we see that uh, U.S. inflation uh, was uh, is the highest it's been since 2008 at five percent. Uh, but when we look at the what moved the most pricing wise is definitely energy. And I would mostly pinpoint oil. Uh, oil has had a huge run this year from about $37, $40 a barrel up to over $70 a barrel. Uh, and I'll show you a chart on some commodities in just a second. But that's been the big push that's driven that rate to 5%. So it's really been oil. Now that definitely affects everything because, you know, if you get a package shipped from Amazon, it comes via a truck that you got to put gas in or oil. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it is a, it, it does have a big factor in the economy, but it's not the only factor because we can also see that they have on this chart, they have food. Now food prices did increase, but only 2.2%. So fairly modest. The big mover has definitely been oil for this past, uh, uh, past month. And then if we go back to the previous month, where we had 4.2% inflation. Again, the big mover was energy or oil prices. So that's driving the overall, uh, that, that rate higher. I would say if you could back out energy, and I, we, I probably should do the math on this before I talk about it, but I would say if you could back out energy, you would probably be in the two and a half, maybe 3% uh, range, if that, in inflation, which is within the target zone for the Fed. Uh, so that would signal, signify a healthy price range. Uh, and just, uh, I pulled up a chart on, uh, uh, let's see if we can get to it. Okay, I just pulled up a chart to, to show you, this is a, a year to date chart on uh, oil prices. Uh, so if you, if you kind of haven't been uh, uh, watching or noticing, particularly at the pump, I mean, we were at 47. Uh, I'm sorry, I said 37 before, but we were at 47 at the beginning of the year, and uh, we've now moved up to $70 a barrel. And that's uh, that's on Brent, which is the more used. We can also look at West Texas Intermediary, done about the same thing. And it's not a double, but it's pretty close. Uh, so this is definitely the main driver in inflation. Uh, so let's go back and take a look at a couple of other, uh, let's again, look at the history of inflation uh, to get an idea. So if we go up here and we click on inflation rates, uh, we can pull up a chart uh, that goes back to 2011. Uh, and you can kind of see here that, uh, you know, we've had, oh, you know, if we go back uh, 2011, which is 10 years, we can have, we've had between three and, you know, it's been as low as, uh, less than 1%, but it's been in that kind of in that one to 3% zone. And that's kind of the history with we've, that we've had in the United States. That's a healthy level. And here we see that we popped up last uh, month to 4.2%. And then now we're at 5%. Uh, now that's a year over year number. Now, the other thing that I would, that I would kind of dissect into that is remember, we're, what are we comparing the 5% uh, CPI growth too, even including the oil, of course, we're comparing it to last May uh, and last April, and then we'll throw in March as well. So that was right at the height of the coronavirus. So May, April, and May, or May, April, and June, when prices were at their lowest. Uh, and now we can kind of see that, uh, so when we're comparing to that, we can see we've had a, a, a big raise from a low level. So another thing that the uh, that uh, Janet Yellen and the Fed are uh, stating that this is uh, because we were so low uh, last time at this year in prices, that's why we're seeing a bigger uh, jump. So they're saying their their thinking is is that this is going to be a short term effect. We're not going to see uh, high this high inflation going forward, but we have to take it month by month and see what happens because it's uh, it's harder to predict inflation and interest rates than it is to uh, predict uh, stock market gains or losses. Uh, so um uh, so just a little dissection. Then so now let's take a look at 
uh, take a, uh, two scenarios. First scenario is if inflation does fizzle out and we go back to a normal rate of, you know, two to uh, 3%, uh, what's that going to mean? What kind of stocks are going to benefit going forward? And then it's still going to be a, a growth stock market. And it's been definitely uh, a past number of years, 10 years, at least we've had, we've been focusing on growth stocks. Growth stocks have been doing far better than value stocks. Uh, now, uh, so if it goes back to normal, things are going to be business as usual. And we're going to have all the usual suspects uh, doing really well. All your growth stocks, you know, Apple, Amazon uh, continue to climb as their future earnings increase and are unhindered by higher prices. But let's say that inflation does stick and we do go through a period of four or five, six percent inflation. If that's the case, then uh, we want to start to shift and look at value stocks. Uh, and the three areas that you're going to look at is you're going to look at value stocks, you're going to look at commodities, and you're going to look at real estate. Uh, because what's the heart of inflation is prices rising, commodity prices rising. So you might find a way through uh, maybe some ETFs, uh, possibly even some direct purchases into different commodities uh, because they will, if, in, if uh, inflation rates continue to go up, they will usually follow suit as well. Uh, value stocks, uh, which uh, I'll we'll show you a couple of uh, screens. We can look for value stocks. Value stocks would also be a, a very good place to be. And then uh, most and some real estate, such as real estate investment trusts. Also, you're going to see some growth uh, it, you'll, because uh, as prices go up, real estate rates, as we've seen, prices are going up now, uh, but they'll go up and rents will go up, which is the driver of real estate investment trusts. Uh, so they'll keep pace with inflation. So those are kind of your three areas that you'll hide in. Uh, now, if inflation continues to go up and it causes the Fed to raise rates, so if they raise the discount rate, well, then, uh, th then uh, we, we might want to be looking at bonds, but I, uh, but we, you probably want to hold until those rates are higher on bonds, uh, because if it, uh, discount rate goes up, usually in turn bond rates, uh, bond coupons or bond rates will go up. So that's where you want to be, uh, into, uh, you want to be, in, you want to capture some of those higher rates. Excuse me. Uh, any uh, any questions so far? <laughs> okay. So let's just uh, so um, so let me just show you a couple of of uh, screens if we do have that higher inflation where we can find a list of <clears throat> of uh, value stocks that we we might want to consider investing in or real estate investment trusts. And I would go to any um, any site and look up the different indexes or ETFs. So you can go to BlackRock or I have Vanguards up here. And let's see, we'll see if I can pull up a, uh, uh, let's go to, um, we want to go to large cap. Re reason large cap is you want to, also, if we're presuming that interest rates are going to, or interest rates are going up and inflation is going to continue to stay high, we want to, we want to uh, be in large cap stocks because your small cap stocks are really going to get uh, hurt as well, and particularly small cap growth. Uh, so I'm just focusing just as an idea generator, take a look at a list of large cap value. And we can just break it down into the S&P or we could do it into the Russell uh, 1000 value, but we'll use the S&P's S&P value. Uh, and I'm just looking at the index via the ETF. And if we scroll down here, we can just get a list of some names, the, the top uh, 10 that come up that are your value stocks, Berkshire Hathaway's always gonna be on the list. Uh, JP Morgan, Walt Disney, Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson, and uh, ExxonMobil. So just as an idea generator, 
uh, some of the areas that we can um, uh, that we can look for to find some value ideas if that's the case. And then I'll just go back and uh, we'll look for one other area that we could find uh, some value ideas. Uh, and that would be real estate investment trusts. And I would also throw in there, possibly take a look at utilities as well. So I'll do that as well, uh, because those tend to be, again, uh, good places to hide and maybe even get some appreciation in a uh, value market or high uh, dividend, or I'm sorry, high interest rate, high um, inflation rate market. Uh, let's see, real estate, here we go. So we'll take a look at real estate. <coughs> and again, we look at the, just the top 10 for some real estate ideas. And these are real estate investment trusts. So American Tower, uh, now they're, they're a real estate investment trust, but what do they do? They do cell phone towers, but they own the real estate that the cell phone towers are on. So probably with 5G rollout could be also a pretty decent area to be in. Uh, ProLogix, another real estate investment trust, Count Castle, Equinox, a name you might be familiar with is Public Storage. Uh, so, you know, we all have our, our uh, uh, we all are in, have all, we all have a storage unit uh, that we thought we were going to keep for three months, but we've now had it for three years and uh, continuing to go on. So that, that uh, also can be a good area. Uh, and we can also look at different industries. Um, in, a, in a rising price market, you probably want to stick towards more industrial real estate, uh, healthcare real estate. Uh, or uh, growing real estate rather than um, hotels uh, for, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, those might be. So some areas of real estate could do well. Some other areas might suffer such as real estate or uh, um, is a good example. So let's go back to one more. Let's just take a look and see if we can find a list of um, uh, some commodities or I'm sorry, utilities, and then we'll look for commodities. So let's uh, look for some utilities. And I'll just pull up, uh, and again, just a top 10, some of the names. Uh, we, you pro we probably all know at least one of them because we pay our bill each month. Uh, but, uh, you know, here's, a, here's a, the biggies, Next Era, Energy, Duke, Southern, Dominion, American Electric Power, Exelon, Sempra, Excel, uh, Public Service Enterprise. So just as, uh, you know, just some uh, things to look at. And of course, I'm just looking at the top 10. We can go into this index or this ETF and look at the full list of utilities kind of as a uh, uh, idea generator if... Uh, you thought that was the way to go if we think that uh, inflation is going to stick and remain a problem going forward. Uh, and then the last one, we'll see if we can take a look at quick look at some uh, commodities ideas. Uh, you know, I it, just because it's so much uh, cheaper and easier, I would try to do a commodities through a uh, ETF uh, as opposed to trying to direct buy commodities um, which you can do, but uh, it's uh, a lot more work and, and a little bit more cumbersome. Um, but um, let's just see if I can find a list of, eh, I don't think I'm going to find it on this site. Uh, I'll pull up some on another site, but one other thing I wanted to mention, another area of the market where we can get some ideas if, we're having, if we are going to see a rising inflation economy, uh, prices moving higher, rates moving higher, uh, is consumer discretionary rather than, uh, I'm sorry, consumer staples rather than consumer discretionary uh, because people are going to continue to buy uh, those things that they've always bought, good, uh, high inflation or low inflation. So things like Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Walmart, Pepsi, Costco, Philip Morris, uh, again, things that are pro that are going to that are going to do okay uh, inflation is never uh good overall 
So some things are going to do just okay if we do have hyper or high inflation going forward, uh, and uh, and uh, some things are going to suffer. So there's, you're not going to have too many huge winners uh, in a um, high inflation market, and that's the concern with everyone right now. Um, so last thing is, let me show you just a couple of. Um, I'll pull up some. See if we can pull up some commodities. Uh, let's see. Had some. Okay, so I, I pulled up oil. And hopefully you can see this. Uh, but some other, and these are direct commodities. Again, I would I would look for some way to get into those if that's the direction you chose to go in. Uh, but things like uh, you know, I'd rather pick soybean. Soybeans just more used in everything. So we can kind of see here that if you look at a chart of soybean, and this is a we'll pull up a year to date chart. If I can get out of this. Uh, I may have just been locked out. Uh, sorry, I got a lot. Uh, I'm not going to be able to. They, uh, they want me to sign in, and it's going to take me a minute to do that, so I won't do that. But uh, in in all those commodities that we looked at, let's see if I can find. Well, here's here's soybean. Actually, here's a chart on it. Okay, so I found one on CNBC. Uh, here's soybean. If we look year to date, we can see that. Uh, you know, it's gone, and this is the the thousand bushel price. So, uh, you could you could equate this to thirteen dollars a bushel. It's now, uh, yeah, actually, it's come down a little bit at fifteen a bushel. Um, other, um, you know, a lot of other commodities. So we can pull up a list. Uh, you know, anything agricultural commodities. So soybean, coin or uh, corn, sugar, coffee, that kind of thing, but also um, uh, metals. Um, gold is to its own as a separate thing, uh, but certainly um, if you have a high inflation, it's a good place to go into as well. But uh, silver, platinum, copper, and palladium, and then uh, your, in, uh, your industrial metals, you know, uh, steel, copper, uh, that's a, that sort of thing. Uh, so again, we got to kind of determine, are we, uh, are we going to see high commodities or are we going to see is inflation going to continue or is this just a flash in the pan uh you know you kind of got to get it uh month uh you got to look at it month by month uh so let's see what's the url uh the one i was looking at i think you're referring to i'm just seeing the chat now is um uh usinflationcalculator.com just a good site that kind of lays it all out uh for inflation <clears throat> that uh i usually look at every month uh, as the CPI comes out. Uh, so um, I uh, hope that answered your question. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, uh, I'll go ahead and um, if there's any questions. So again, just to wrap up, you, we kind of got to decide is that are we going to have a problem with inflation or not? Uh, is this a short-term uh, short-term scenario? I'm only because oil is such a large component of it. I would keep an eye on oil to see where that's going to go uh, to kind of help me make that determination. And of course, always look next month uh, and see what the number is next month for uh, for commodity or for uh, CPI, and then make some adjustments. If you know, if, again, if we say, hey, it's going to be inflation's on the rise, then we got to uh, think about some uh, uh, adjustments. We may be going out of a growth market into a value market. But again, if it's a flash in the pan, then uh, it's it's more going to be business as usual, and and we want to be in the, we want to be in in those growing areas uh, because they're going to continue to to continue to grow. All right. So I'm, uh, oh, let me... Oh, like how, okay, so the CPI thing, sure. Let me uh, go back to it. Uh, so so I pulled up this website. Um, uh, the website I'm using is usinflationcalculator.com. And this is uh, now in the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, does come out by the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics or uh, Bureau of Economics. It comes out every month. Most uh investors or economists don't look at the month to month number. They look at the year over year. So they're comparing this May 
to last May. And they're saying how much have prices gone up since then on average. And it's based on a basket of goods. And what's in the basket of goods is everything you and I buy. And you can go on the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics and they'll give you the whole list of it. But it's basically food, uh, clothing, uh, utilities or energy prices. So, so mostly oil, gas we put in our car, oils we use to heat our houses, uh, rents and mortgage rates, uh, our prices, are they going up? Another area that's climbed significantly that's affected that CPI higher to that 5% is housing prices have gone up, rents have gone up significantly, and so have uh, real estate prices. Uh, and also, um, uh, so those are the main things that are in the, the, in the index. So uh, the, uh, in entertainment's the last one. So like the price of a movie ticket, that kind of thing, um, or a vacation or a cruise uh, that's put into uh, uh, the CPI index and says that prices have gone up 5%. So I'd say the big drivers you've seen in the, that have driven inflation are definitely oil. As we can see, you know, if we just look at oil prices, how much have they risen? Well, let me go back. Uh, to uh, okay, so if we go back to how much oil prices have risen, twenty eight percent from last May. If we just look at oil or energy prices, so that's a pretty massive raise that swayed us to that five percent raise. Uh, so five uh, percent uh, overall. Uh, so so the biggies are oil, certainly real estates, so rents, and mortgages. Uh, real estate prices. And then the, th the third one is um, cars and, and used cars uh, are also in that and they've gone up about 50% as well. Um, for, you know, for used car, mostly because there's a, a chip shortage in cars, a, a electronic chip shortage in cars. So they're having trouble manufacturing cars because there's so much electronics in cars now, and that's a and that's run down into the used car market as well, driving those prices up. Uh, so, so hopefully that kind of uh, gives you an overview on that. Uh, but it, uh, just the rising of prices, and uh, and this will be almost always a, if it continues a negative effect on investments, particularly growth stock investments less so on, uh, on value, real estate, uh, investment trusts, and commodities. But, but still, all things uh, are rising prices too high. Rising prices are, are, are never good. Okay, so any other uh, questions or things I can answer for you? Let's see. Let me go back to my chat here. All right then. Uh, well, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, got a. Uh, just